Under the provisions of the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, the U.S. Department of Defense has assisted the Republic of Kazakhstan with the process of eliminating from its territory the SS-18 Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Bases of the former Soviet Strategic Rocket Forces. The U.S. Defense Threat Reduction Agency's Cooperative Threat Reduction Office managed this effort, which was supported by non-Lugar Cooperative Threat Reduction Funds. The NATO codename SS-18 Intercontinental Ballistic Missile was known to the Soviet Union as the RS-20 ICBM, the largest of its so-called fourth generation multiple warhead missiles. It was first deployed in the mid-1970s as a follow-on to the SS-9 ICBM, which it eventually replaced. The missiles could carry a single warhead with a yield of 20 to 25 megatons or up to 10 warheads each with a yield in the range of 500 to 750 kilotons. The six Soviet SS-18 bases, three of which were in Kazakhstan, were host to more destructive power than any other Soviet ICBM missile class, by one estimate totaling nearly 1,700 megatons, or about 85,000 times the yield of the nuclear bomb dropped in Hiroshima in the Second World War. This power could be delivered by the SS-18 missiles to distances of up to 8,000 miles with an accuracy of less than 1,000 feet. The silos that housed the SS-18 missiles were also unique and in 1984 were described by the U.S. Department of Defense as the world's hardest silos. These were modified SS-9 missile silos that had been deepened to accommodate the larger SS-18 rocket and hardened to withstand up to 7,000 pounds per square inch by some U.S. estimates. The Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, or START-1, which was signed in 1991 and entered into force in 1994, limits the number of strategic nuclear warheads, those that can be targeted at distances over 3,000 miles. Although the treaty was negotiated between the United States and the Soviet Union prior to the breakup of the USSR, the newly independent Republic of Kazakhstan agreed to remove the more than 1,000 strategic nuclear warheads that existed on its territory and signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The dismantled SS-18 missile bases are located at Zhangiz Tobe, Leninsk, and Derzhavinsk. Test silos at the Balapan nuclear test field were also eliminated. As of November 1998, the dismantlement work was completed at all sites. The START-1 protocol defines a process for the elimination of the ICBM silo launchers, which includes, first, removal, dismantlement, or destruction of the silo door and headworks, either by excavation or blasting. This step of the dismantlement process was completed by the Russian Federation by the end of 1995. Second, filling the silo to the level of the base of the excavation or explosion crater. And, after a period of at least 90 days, grading of the site by filling with earth. The Defense Threat Reduction Agency hired Brown & Root ABB Sousa Incorporated, a joint venture, as the prime contractor to complete the dismantlement of the ICBM sites in Kazakhstan. Brown & Root ABB Sousa maintained a 12-person support camp near each of the sites involved until the dismantlement, regrading, and site turnover was complete. Each dismantlement group included one or two U.S. site managers and up to 10 local support personnel, such as construction supervisors, drivers, and translators to oversee between 60 and 80 local subcontract workers who perform the demolition and regrading work using local equipment. In general, an ICBM silo regiment consisting of seven silos could be dismantled in about two months, and two or three regiments could be worked simultaneously. The rate of silo dismantlement was 45 to 60 silos per year, and the work was actually completed several months ahead of the scheduled completion date. Brown and Root ABB Sousa maintained a documentation file for each of the silo sites dismantled. An environmental site assessment report was produced for each missile base, which included detailed descriptions of the individual silo sites. These reports also include descriptions of soil samples that were collected for hazardous materials analysis, the site vegetation, 
the buildings and near surface facilities directly associated with the silo and the condition of the silo itself. These reports focused on the detection and identification of hazardous surface and near surface materials to determine potential health and safety risks to on-site personnel and consequently their impact on the dismantlement efforts at that site. These files included extensive site maps which locate the silo and associated structures, as well as plan and cross-section architectural drawings of all of the surface and subsurface structures at the site, including cross-sections of the silo down to the six-meter destruction level called for in the START-1 protocol. The Russian military removed the missiles from the silos and all equipment and supplies from the site by the mid-1990s. Prior to the departure of Russian military units, most of the silos were destroyed by the detonation of explosives placed around the headworks. These blasts demolished the silo door, headworks wall, and silo door pocket, and produced a crater centered over the silo tube, about 6 meters deep and up to 25 meters across. In many cases, the crater exposes the underground entrance into the launch control center, as well as the barbette wall encircling the silo headworks. The blasts commonly upended the silo door pocket and flipped the one meter thick, 120 ton silo door onto the crater lip. When Brown and Root ABB Sousa began work in 1996 to complete the dismantlement process, the sites and site structures were empty and mostly intact except for the blasted silo headworks. The process of site dismantlement can be summarized in three major steps. Initial site assessment, site demolition and reclamation, and administrative acceptance of the completed graded site and formal turnover to the Kazakhstan Land Commission. Before dismantlement work was started, a physical inspection of the site was performed, including screening for hazardous wastes and conditions. Air quality and radiological surveys were conducted, and soil and groundwater sampling sites were identified in order to locate and characterize the nature of any surface or near surface chemical or radiological contamination. In general, contamination was minor. For example, at the Derjavinsk base, no sites were encountered with radiological conditions. However, PCB contaminated soil was noted in limited areas on several silo sites, and these hazards were abated during or prior to dismantlement. Soil samples were taken and analyzed by Kazakhstan's Institute for Chemical Sciences, and radiological sampling was performed by the National Nuclear Center. Afterwards, an environmental site assessment report was prepared for each silo site, summarizing the observations made. If site abatement was required, a site-specific hazardous material disposal plan was drawn up, detailing the abatement procedures. The site dismantlement process included building demolition, additional metal demolition as needed, metal and concrete salvaging or disposal, silo capping, trenching for cable salvaging, extraction of buried tanks, the final grading of a completed site, and a final topographic and mapping survey. Generally, the destruction of the silo headworks left the silo door, silo door pocket, and headworks wall intact or in large pieces. Because these pieces were often too large and heavy to handle with available equipment, they were either cut up into fragments or blasted again into smaller pieces by Almaty Promstroy, a subcontractor to Brown and Root ABB Sousa, using anti-tank mines. This metal debris was collected for shipment to a foundry for recycling. The prefabricated concrete slabs used for surfacing roads and helicopter pads, as well as concrete fence posts, were salvaged for use by the local farming communities. All above ground structures were demolished, generally by bulldozer or wrecking ball, though on occasion some buildings were blasted. Buried structures were either completely demolished partially demolished or excavated depending on their depth. In addition to the START treaty requirements, local Kazakhstan requirements included a rubble-free zone on the site, extending from the ground surface to 1.5 meters below the surface. Buried structures at greater depths were allowed to remain. Trenches were excavated to provide access to the headworks metal and silo tube. 
rubble and other non-salvageable debris were pushed into the silo tube. When the 30 meter high silo tube was filled to capacity, it was then capped with a reinforced concrete shield one half meter thick and about eight meters in diameter. After the cap was placed over the tube, the silo crater, which is about six meters deep, was filled with additional rubble to about 1.5 meters below the level of the final ground surface. The top layer was composed of one and a half meters of topsoil. The massive base for the dish antenna near the launch silo usually required additional blasting. The base, which is composed of reinforced concrete nearly seven meters in diameter and up to four meters thick, was cut at a depth of two meters, then rimmed with mines and blasted. The resulting rubble was buried in place or extracted for burial in a trench. Trenches were also excavated alongside the larger buildings and shallow buried tunnels. Like the trenches near the silos, they were filled with debris to a level 1.5 meters below the level of the final ground surface. The remaining space was backfilled with earth, followed by up to one half meter of topsoil. Brown and Root, ABB Souza, removed most of the accessible cables within each launch silo site, as well as some of the cables between these sites and the launch control centers. After all the above ground structures were demolished and the debris buried, the silo filled, capped and buried, and all metal removed from the site or buried, the site was then graded by bulldozer to conform to the surrounding topography. A final topographic survey of the site was made, recording the locations of the silos and the debris burial pits. The original plans called for reseeding the site with indigenous vegetation, although at Derjavinsk, the local farming community requested that no seeding occur since they intend to convert some of the reclaimed land for wheat farming. The dismantlement process eliminated all above ground traces of the silos and associated structures. A completed site now appears to be no more than a patch of unvegetated farmland or pasture. The final step in the dismantlement process was the acceptance of the site by local and regional authorities followed by the administrative turnover of the site to the Kazakhstan State Land Committee. Because the individual silo sites at Kazakhstan's ICBM bases were largely the same layout and construction and were situated in similar geologic and hydrologic environments, the process used to dismantle them was therefore relatively efficient. This allowed similar methods to be applied repeatedly and refined over time. By hiring local labor as subcontractors and leasing local equipment, Brown and Root ABB Sousa was able to complete the dismantlement of a regiment in about two months, with two or three regiments being worked simultaneously. Thus, it was possible to dismantle as many as 10 silos per month. The dismantlement program also benefited the local communities of Kazakhstan by returning usable land to the local farming communities by recycling some of the construction materials for local use, and by providing jobs for the workers directly involved in the dismantlement work. Finally, the strategic importance of this program cannot be overemphasized. By assisting the Republic of Kazakhstan to become a non-nuclear weapons state and eliminating start-limited systems, the U.S. Department of Defense has reduced the threat posed by the 148 silo-based weapon systems at a fraction of what it would cost to continue to counter them. Furthermore, this project has strengthened the ability of the United States to respond to and defend against the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction.